anonymous rights. My understanding is that the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight response and the parasympathetic deals with the capacity to freeze or go inert in general. To cope with anxiety, I use, uh, an, I use exercise and or my breath, exhaling for longer than inhaling to engage the calming, sometimes called rest and digest, parasympathetic wing of the nervous system in contrast to the fight or flight. Uh, wing of the nervous system. So this person uses exercise or breath, exhaling for longer than inhaling to engage the calming parasympathetic system and ease the anxiety. Sometime, someone I know recently said they were virtually paralyzed with anxiety over a certain issue. In this instance, would it be incorrect to recommend the longer exhale method to try to reduce their anxiety as this would engage the parasympathetic system even more and potentially induce even more of a freeze response. If it's not suitable to use the longer exhale method, what would work with the anxiety? Really interesting question. So um, <clears throat> first, I find that when I'm talking about methods with people, I always try to emphasize the idea of individual differences, different things work for different people and at different times and for different issues. So that's a context. Second, it would be true that if a person is vulnerable to uh, a heightened freeze response, which is the case depending uh, to some extent on a person's temperament and also a history of trauma. So if there is a tendency toward uh, too much parasympathetic activation, which can be the human equivalent of an animal playing dead, then it, it, it can really help to engage more sympathetic activity so that a person doesn't feel so frozen or numbed or dissociated with fear. And that would look more like, uh, for example, focusing on inhalations, since we're talking about the body, since the sympathetic nervous system is engaged with inhalation. I'll do that myself. If, if I feel something's coming at me that's immobilizing, a kind of freeze response, I'll raise the chi. I don't know if I'm actually raising the chi, but you know, it kind of seems like that. I'll inhale more vigorously. I'll, I'll do multiple intense inhalations. With that, I'll, uh, sort of, I'll activate body sensations or states of mind that go with a readiness for action. Maybe I'll pull up a bit of a body memory of playing football with friends or volleyball or athletics of some kind, or just being determined uh, to mobilize energy uh, for a coping response. So that's the second suggestion, focusing on mobilizing energy if a person is paralyzed with anxiety and also uh, getting, uh, you know, building up more of, a, of, a, an, of, an, of an active way of approaching it. Third suggestion, why is the person paralyzed with anxiety? Could it be that they just don't know what to do? That it's more of an indecision because they're not really clear what to do. And they're, in that case, what would help is forming some clarity about what to do, reflecting on the situation, maybe talking with other people about it, forming a plan, and being clear what the plan is. Maybe the plan is, I just gotta live with it. That's a plan. Maybe the plan is, I'd never talk with that person again because there's no cheese down that tunnel. After 10 trips, no cheese. Every time, I can be sure there's no cheese down that tunnel. Maybe that's your plan. The point is, uh, a plan doesn't necessarily mean it has to get into conflict or assertiveness with other people or involve any overt action. The plan could be watch and wait, but it's still a plan. So finding a plan to deal with it. Another thing that's really helpful, and I'll finish on this one just to make sure I've got more time for other questions, is to take any kind of action. There's a saying in psycho psychotherapy world, action binds anxiety. So any kind of action, shifting in the chair, sitting up a little straighter, leaning forward, uh, deliberately taking the action of not looking intimidated physically in your body language by another person. That's an action. Disengaging is an action. Uh, finding out some relevant fact, maybe related to forming a plan. That's an action. Take some kind of action. And along the way of taking the action, take in the experience of taking the action. 
the, which is also a really good corrective if people have started to acquire what's called learned helplessness, which I suspect would be the case here if a person feels paralyzed with anxiety.